French and Indian War began when the French and the British both colonized the New World. The British focused mainly on the East Coast and the 13 colonies, as we've already studied, the New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies, while the French focused their efforts mainly on Canada, including their main city of Quebec. They also tried to focus on the Ohio River Valley, as well as the Mississippi River Valley and the Mississippi River, and more importantly, down here at the bottom, Louisiana. By the late 1600s, colonial lines had been established between Great Britain on the eastern coast and New France on the Ohio side. The biggest area of conflict occurred in the area of the Ohio River Valley. France had already begun trading with many of the Huron Indians of the Great Lakes areas, and they relied greatly on the Huron Alliance to help them push back the Great British Army. Great Britain, on the other hand, relied heavily on the Iroquois Nation, a very powerful nation of Indians, located in northern parts of New York, along with the Mohawk. They were hoping, again, to push back the French. Tensions seemed to collide when the British began building a fort in modern-day Pittsburgh, where three main rivers all converged, the Ohio River, the Allegheny River, and the Mahongahela River. Both the French and the British had relied heavily on trade to secure their relationships with the Indians. They provided materials that the Indians could not contain, obtain themselves, such as rifles, metal, and other useful items. For much of the early 1700s, the French controlled the land to the west of the Ohio. However, in 1753, Virginia governor asked for many soldiers and men to begin building a fort at the mouth of these rivers in the hopes of controlling this lucrative transportation source. When the French heard that the British were moving in on their land, they immediately sent forces to stop this. They were successful. All this while, George Washington had been traveling with a, a group of men in order to reinforce these soldiers. He stopped short of it when he heard of the fort's surrender. He immediately began building another fort, Fort Necessity. This fort was much smaller than the Fort Pitt that had been originally developed. This fort was nothing more than a simple wooden wall surrounding a simple storage shed. The British forces were outnumbered, had poor supplies, and wet gunpowder. It was very, very dire situation. Eventually, the French would attack, defeating George Washington. He would be forced to surrender. The French would allow him to march back to Virginia. This, would, this event would mark the beginning of the French and Indian War, which would become a worldwide struggle between the empires of Great Britain and France. Knowing the importance of this Ohio River Valley, and more importantly, the fort that had been developed, the British decided that they were going to take back this area. Meanwhile, the French had continued building the fort and had renamed it Fort Duquesne. The British, confident that the colonial militia, or volunteer soldiers, could not handle the, the tough task of defeating the French, British sent 2,000 soldiers under a general named Braddock, their prized war hero. Braddock was to march west to the Fort Duquesne, defeat the French, and return control of the Ohio River Valley to the British. Along the way, the British encountered many obstacles. There were no roads, so any path to the Ohio River Valley had to be carved out of the harsh wilderness. It was very slow going. After many months, Braddock reached within miles of the fort. The French, however, had different plans. Under the Marquis de Montcalm, the French attacked with a far lesser force of 900 soldiers. They, however, capitalized on the harsh climate and conditions of the wilderness. 
Using the trees to hide in, they used guerrilla tactics and attacked the much larger British forces. The general held his position gallantly. He even had four horses shot out from underneath him. Washington had two horses shot out. Bullets coasting by left and right. Braddock would eventually be mortally wounded. Washington would take control and watch his beloved general die in his arms. Another crushing defeat for Washington. In the end, nearly 1,000 men under Washington and Braddock's command were either killed or wounded. American colonists were stunned by this defeat. Braddock was a war hero, sure of victory. This event would lead to another two years of British losses and French victories. The first part of the war was all French controlled. The French plan had been originally to control the Mississippi River. If they were able to build forts along the way, they could connect their two colonies of New Orleans and Quebec making an impenetrable line of defenses and choking off Great Britain from any further expansion. By 1757, William Pitt, pictured here, was determined to win the war. As the new Secretary of State for Great Britain, he began sending some of the nation's best generals to the battles in the New World. By 1759, the British had already captured many of the forts, including, but not limited to, Fort Duquesne in the Ohio River Valley, a pivotal fort. Pitt began writing a number of letters to the colonists, hoping to raise support for the great British cause. Tensions were high between the British and the colonists. However, Pitt tried the best he could to soothe over the relationships. The turning point of the war began in the summer of 1759, when the French stronghold of Quebec was the next target for the British. Quebec, which sat on the St. Lawrence River, was easily defended by the cliffs on either side of it. The British, using their naval forces, surrounded the city with a blockade, cutting off any points of surrender or escape. For two months, the British had surrounded Quebec, but had not been able to access the Plains of Abraham, until a young soldier discovered a secret path leading up through the cliffs that was unguarded. General Wolfe, the new British commanding officer, had sent 4,000 of his men across the river to climb up these cliffs secretly in one night. When the French awoke the next morning, they were faced by 4,000 British soldiers on the Plains of Abraham. What happened next was the Battle of Quebec. In less than 10 minutes, British and French forces had faced off, with the British forces being victorious. During the battle, however, the British General Wolfe had taken a mortal wound. He shortly died afterwards. The next day, the defending French general, the Marquis de Montcalm, who had been victorious at Fort Duquesne, had also succumbed to a wound he received during the battle. Both the British and the French generals were now dead. This victory for the British had marked an incredible turning point for the war. From this point on, the French were on the run. With no major cities to supply them, it was only a matter of time before the fall of the French Empire would occur in North America.